All right, we are live. Welcome back, everyone. So excited to see you. I am A Day, otherwise known as Black Carnivore, and um, I am here with Arian, otherwise known as Real Knowledge, and we are bringing you Carnivore for the Culture. Really excited to talk about that tonight. So let me bring him in, um, which of course I f did not do. Yeah, it here we like are. there was a red flash on my face. <laughs> There we I go. Know. Okay. I know. Still, still getting the tech after like a year. Still getting the tech together. So, okay. yeah, it happens. It happens. So, um, how you doing? I, it's been two weeks. Um, it's been a while. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, so I'm good. Um, feeling pretty good. I have learned once again that coffee is not my friend, <laughs> so that's lovely. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. What happened? What happened? Um, so, a uh, friend bought me a, a grinder, so I would be at her house, we have coffee, and um, she, like, has coffee beans and grinds them up and all that and um i forget what the conversation was but it ended with her saying oh i'll buy you one." so she just goes on amazon orders it right then and now that's a like, nice friend right right like very much appreciated yeah but now now like i have this whole realm of stuff to learn that i've previously never been into at all like how to grind coffee um, and all the different flavors. And then I met somebody else who's talking to me about like how uh, coffee, like real coffee, it has like specific flavors and stuff. And I didn't know about any of this. I had never known. I thought coffee was Yeah, like coffee, is, coffee is a whole thing. I mean, once you like learn it, there's, you can go way beyond, you know, chock full of nuts it, or Folgers. It's like a whole right. thing. And like previous to that, I had just barely, very recently stepped up from buying ShopRite brand coffee to <laughs> chock full of nuts. <laughs> ShopRite. Like, yeah, store brand uh, for those who don't know ShopRite. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I had just barely stepped up my coffee game, and then all of a sudden, now I'm like buying beans and grinding them. Um, I'm looking. And up, it's like, delightful to grind to grind before each cup, so that way you get the freshest, most delicious flavor. Right. So then I'm even getting to the point of thinking, well, maybe I need to buy a coffee pot that like, so I have a percolator, which like already was kind of a step up from just a plain old drip machine. Uh -huh. But that percolator really isn't built for like small batches. Really the smallest it can do at any time is like two or four cups. And uh -huh. it's just me. So I'm grinding this coffee and I'm trying to get the flavors right. I don't really, you know, I'm just, I'm experimenting. And I didn't realize that I had gone from drinking maybe like one or two cups of day, cups a day of half strength coffee to four cups of full strength. Mm -hmm. So yeah, back to low electrolyte, not feeling good. I'm like waking it's up so tired. It's so easy. So easy. It's really frustrating. Um, I guess really the frustrating part isn't even the coffee itself. It's that I didn't realize it was happening. Yeah. So like I'm days into it and it just took me to today to realize I need to stop this. So didn't drink any coffee um, and made sure to have salt, uh, like did the, the salt under the tongue and then I sip some water with a bunch of electrolyte drops in it. And this is how I know my electrolytes are screwed up because normally that stuff would taste disgusting to me. Mm -hmm. Today it tastes kind of okay. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, totally screwed my body up just by having way more coffee than I should be having. Yeah. Well, you know, that can happen. 
And while I was sick, you know, I had the whole thing with my heart rate, which I, I think, again, was the electrolytes. And partly I was, you know, just drinking a lot more and not eating that much. So I wasn't mm-hmm. having an, enough opportunities for salt. But um, mm-hmm. I was having coffee while I was sick. And I think that, you know, that just contributed to it. So probably. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm, I'm off coffee. Like once I got well, I stopped. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, and I'm drinking water a lot with, you know, with, uh, salt and electrolytes. And at the, um, uh, emergency room, they gave me vitamin D. So I've been taking that. I mean, I don't know. Right. Like it most likely doesn't hurt. So. Well, my calcium was really low. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe it helps. I don't know. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could also try to sit outside in the sun for 30 minutes at, like, noon. But I didn't. I haven't done that yet. I, it's not the easiest thing to do, especially at noon. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know about you up in New York, but, like, down here, we had, like, spring for, like, a week, and then winter came back, and then spring came back, and now, like, summer's here punching us in the face. I'm not going outside to sit for a half hour after, like, 10 o'clock in the morning, probably. hmm Yeah. Like, well, it was, like, 87 today. I'm not, I'm not doing yeah. that. Yeah. Today it was cooler, but yesterday it was, I think, 88. Yeah. It was hot. You know, it's like, man, or is it July or May? Right. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I don't know, but I do. I mean, like once once we get more full um, full on into summer, like I really I do try to get out there because like this is you know all of a sudden we get you know from mm-hmm. you know October or September October until well now, <laughs> you know we don't get any, or I yeah. you know I don't really get a lot of um, you know sun so. Yeah, it's well, definitely hard to get as much. Yeah. Well, anyway, we've got a lot of people here. Hey, Mary Ann, good to see you. Jimmy ZC, Porsche, Porsche, um, Anthony Lewis, yes, my hair is blue. Um, large picture, it's great to see you all. <laughs> and yes, and that's right, large picture. Coffee equals death. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I posted a pic, um, a video yesterday about um, making lemonade with um, a Lakanta style uh, sweetener. So, yeah, you got yeah. some explaining to do. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so I was I put, in the video. I posted that um, I had a lot of cravings for um, for lemonade, and uh, I think you know partly it was. You know, usually when I, you know, have been sick, you know, growing up and through most of my life, I would make really um, sweet and sour uh, lemonade with cayenne pepper in it. And there's something about, you know, the cayenne pepper and the lemon that soothes the throat. And if I'd been coughing a lot or had a sore throat, it would make, you know, make me feel a lot better. So, you know, that's generally my habit. And then also when I'm sick, you know, my, I'm not breathing through my nose, my, my, um, you know, my mouth is all dry because I'm breathing through my mouth all the time and it just, you know, tastes gross. And, and so there's something about lemon juice that just is very astringent. It's cleansing, it's soothing. And, you know, and so it's my habit to have while sick. Um, and come to think of it, I don't think I've been sick since I've been carnivore. So this is the first mm-hmm. time I've kind of actually gone through being sick. And so, you know, it was just kind of like that. And then uh, on COVID, like I had um, crazy, crazy um, headaches and body aches. And, and I didn't really think about how painful it actually is and it's not just like oh i feel sick i mean it's like actual pain like there's no position that's comfortable things actually hurt but Mm -hmm. um you know and like i said i didn't want to take tylenol until my fever broke so you know the first day you know the first two days i was just 
laying around with a massive headache and you know body aches and um yeah so i think you know i was craving i was also craving sugar because i just wanted something to feel better you know i just wanted to feel better so i didn't do it at all while i was sick you know but partly because i was really worried about like um well, you know, being sick and, and making sure that I, um, you know, kept my inflammation down. I didn't do anything that was going to irritate me. So, you know, so I didn't do it, but towards the, the very end, I mean, once I got to that two week mark, you know, that, that feeling and that craving was still there. And so I finally, you know, just decided to indulge it. So I saw the sweetener and I was like, okay, you know, it's not sugar, you know, hopefully it won't knock me out of ketosis, you know, let's see how this goes. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I bought a bag of lemons and, and this sweetener, which was mind bogglingly expensive. I think had I known how much it cost before I was at the cash register, I would have, I actually would have thought much more, um, <laughs> much more about doing it. But, um, how much was it? 10.99. That was a lot Probably. for, you know, for not that big a container. It was not that <laughs> big a container. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I made the lemonade. Now, I made a lot of lemonade at once, so I basically had a lot of the Lacanta at one time. And, um, you know, so I, I drank it. It was good. Um, it tasted good. Um Although, I don't know, it didn't quite, uh, I don't know, I didn't quite get the satisfaction out of it that I was imagining that I would get, you know, mm -hmm. and so I realized, um, man, all this time thinking about it, like, it's about something else. It's not actually about the food item itself. So, um, you know, that was, that was kind of interesting. And then, um, you know, I drank it and then I, um... I thought, gee, what was that sweetener that, you know, upsets the stomach? Is that, is that erythritol? Is, you know, is that going to do it? And then I was like, oh man, yeah. So <laughs> it was bad for two days. It was bad. So, uh, <laughs> wait, that you had the upset stomach or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I mean, I will admit, I had a lot at once. I mean, I'm talking about, like, a quarter of a cup, half a cup. I don't know. It was a lot. Mm. So, it was my own damn fault. But, there you go. Good God, a quarter cup. Well, you know, if you're going to make really sweet and sour lemonade, like, you know, each cup is this big, and I had, you know, the juice of two lemons in each one, plus... Um, you know, a lot of sh a lot of the sweetener. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Same with um. You know, when I used to make lemonade, like I would go through you know a pound of sugar a week, like making it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that it's interesting. So you had a thing that a lot of people would assume, like, oh no, monk fruit doesn't cause any problems at all. Like I didn't think that it did. I hadn't heard of monk fruit or stevia causing any issues. Um, just that. It well, erythritol does. And remember that this sweetener is a mix of monk fruit and erythritol. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So erythritol, I think, is the sugar alcohol. Mm -hmm. But monk fruit is like that, you know, plant sweetener. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't okay, know. so that's what did it. Yeah, yeah, so this is like, this is like me with the um, the coffee flavoring, like, <laughs> you, yeah. you you wanted a thing, you wanted it to taste a certain way, and it yeah. did in the moment. But damn, did you pay for it? Yeah. Oh yeah, I paid dearly, dearly. <laughs> it mm. was very expensive. Um. Yeah, in more ways than one. Like just. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. So, yeah. do you at all wish that you had just went and either made lemonade with 
actual sugar or went out and bought like a glass of lemonade just satisfy the craving and then go back home uh no i'm really glad i didn't have actual sugar because i would have knocked myself out of ketosis it would have been a whole other thing so yeah i'm glad i didn't um and i'm not gonna (laughs) yeah yeah now I see Jimmy says good evening. Happy to hear um, you're better. Uh, I also had COVID. My appetite changed. I went from one and a half pounds of meat to only one pound. I'm happy to say I'm at 137, 137 pounds lost. Wow, nice. amazing! That's and I'm and I'm drinking Zevia now. I don't understand. Um, <coughs> bless you. Uh, Jimmy, I'm not, sh- I'm not sure what you don't understand, so you can ask that question um, again. But, uh, yeah, I, d- I didn't buy Stevia. I never liked the taste of Stevia, but, you know, maybe it's, it, a, better, <laughs> it's a better option. Yeah, it might be. I know, um, for me, it tastes better after. Yeah, mm, that's why I don't like it. Coming. It's kind um, of bitter. Yeah, I definitely taste the better after. I mm-hmm. can't enjoy basically any artificial sweetener like i feel like sucralose is the one that tastes the best that i've had but sucralose is splenda i don't know i don't know the the brand name of it i'm yeah i'd be lying if i said yes or no to that um or maybe it's equal i don't know possibly um I liked the taste of the uh, Lakanta, um, or Lakanta. Yeah, it it tasted and, good. And um, and I've had, I don't think I've had erythritol, but I've had xylitol because that's in like all the sugar-free gum. Um, mm-hmm. That doesn't really cause me any issues. I don't know what it would be like to have like a lot of that at one time, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, all the sucralose um, sucralose does taste okay, but it still tastes off. I can still taste something wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Aspartame tastes off. Um, aspartame is actually kind of gross to me. And um, yeah, stevia is better. I don't know if I've had monk fruit. Mm-hmm. Anything based on monk fruit. Yeah. Um... I don't know. They all taste a little off to me. But, um, yeah, yeah, xylitol is, I mean, you know, when you start chewing um, a whole pack of Trident gum, uh, yeah, it will also upset your stomach. But, you know, with one piece of gum, it's not a big deal. But, you know, there you go. Like, I, you know, keep going for more and more. So there you go. Um, Okay, Jimmy says, I stopped drinking sweets for a year, and now I have a taste for it. Uh, Gotcha. Um, yeah, well, as long as, you know, you're able to control it, maybe it's not a big deal, but, um, I don't know. Marianne says both monk fruit and, and erythritol bother, um, her digestion. So yeah, that can suck. Mm -hmm. Um, and Monica Wilson says Splenda does have sucralose with, uh, fillers like maltodextrin, but you can also buy pure sucralose. Oh, okay. and Chase says sucralose is Splenda. Had to, had to, he had to Google it though. Um, so yeah, well, so you know, I know that sweeteners is one of those uh, topics. You know, it's not meat. It's not an animal product. Um, a lot of um, carnivores continue to use it without problem. So. Um, you know, if you're using it and you're happy with your journey and you don't have an issue with it, you know, then fine. Um, but if it's bothering you, then, you know, you need to take it out. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, for me, I just kind of, I don't want to play with it. Um, they're so, there doesn't seem to be a good one. It seems like they all are just various versions of bad. <laughs> It's like, like, oh, this one tears up your gut, and they all tear up your gut if you have too much. So if you're like trying to make a dessert that's like, yeah, not gonna kick you out of ketosis, like, oh, it may not do that, but you also may be sick for a day and a half. Like, I, 
wants yeah. that either. My cousin p- made a um, a a lemon iced pound cake with um, almond mm. flour and Lacanta and the Lacanto, and um, <laughs> it was no, no. I mean, it was yeah. it was really good. I didn't have very much, but it was really good. Um, but there is something a little bit weird about that sweetener. It has a, um, mm-hmm. it feels a little bit like I'm biting into tin foil. It's got a, a mm. metallic-y, cool menthol aftertaste. It's very mild, but it's there. So you're eating the lemon it- cake, and then it's like, why do I feel like I've got this fresh sensation? Right, and that's not like <laughs> it's not exactly what you want in your cake flavor profile. Yeah, yeah. Well, it maybe it would be better with a chocolate cake. You, you know, mm. mint and chocolate go together, but not not so much lemon pound cake. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's see. Chase says anything that has um, ol, O-L at the end will upset the digestion of anyone with IBSD um, as he slowly raises his hand. Speaks <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> from experience. Yeah. And April says, um, I've had a couple of spoonfuls of sugar-free frozen Cool Whip. Is that bad? Um I don't, you know, no. I mean, it's up to you. You, you tell me if it was bad. Um, but you might want to try um, whipped actual cream because um, it's delicious and carnivore. Yeah. Although, I mean, I think it's better. Um, it's probably it tastes better and has better texture than Cool Whip, but. Um, but then maybe you don't want to be introduced because I have eaten a whole pint of whipped cream in one sitting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember that story. Yeah. You know, yeah. I get it though, especially if you have good whipped cream. Um, mm-hmm. If you start with a good heavy cream that doesn't have a lot of additives in it, because mm-hmm. when I'm adding heavy cream to like coffee or something, I can't really mm-hmm. taste the additive. But if I'm just tasting that heavy cream um mm-hmm. for some reason especially when it's whipped i can taste the fake stuff in it mm-hmm. um and certain that's when i know that certain ones taste better than others yeah although i mean when i had it i didn't sweeten it i just whipped it by itself and oh yeah yeah that was amazing but yeah, so wait when good. you had your raw cream how was that um it was going in coffee. I didn't like whip it or do anything else to it or I would have had it by itself. So it tasted the same. Mm-hmm. Um, the texture was a little weird because it was like a little goopy. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't have a uniform thickness throughout, which is probably what some of that, um, some of those additives are doing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, as far as the taste, it was normal. Mm-hmm. But yeah, doing the um, whipping the heavy cream and then tasting that, um, I didn't add anything to it. It tasted great, mm-hmm. but I could taste the fakeness in mm-hmm. certain certain brands versus others. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. Portia says um, I do fine with both the uh, with both the sweeteners, but the problem is you want more and more and keeps the sweet in your mouth. And then she shares um, one of the problems with the erythritol. Um, <laughs> I won't repeat that though. And then it makes you uh, go to the library. <laughs> and then Johnny G says, um, "Hey, the chat must be full of purple hair comments." No, not this week. Last week, when um, I had even more purple hair, um, that's when the comments were. And um, let's see, mommy does keto. Um, I just had a couple of spoonfuls of raw cream. Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, it is good stuff. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. 
So we have talked about some of the challenges that we have had over the last couple of weeks following the carnivore diet. So you have been welcomed in. Even veterans have trouble with uh, electrolytes. And, um, and I broke an 11 month streak of not having a single sweet taste for an artificial sweetener. I'm surprised actually I didn't go for the sugar. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of impressed. I'm very surprised that you didn't. Mm. Um, just go for the real thing. And I don't know, like, I didn't think you were ever going to do it. Um, and especially for you to do it on your own. It wasn't like you were out and there was no other options or something like that. Like you just, you were really having the cravings. So you decided to satisfy it in a less carnivore, but not all the way bad way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I had done it the other way, um, I mean, if I had just gone ahead with sugar, I think I would just be getting back into ketosis right now. And I would have had chocolate and cake and all kinds of things. And then my inflammation would have gone way up. And I think that I might not have, I don't know, maybe I would have had a COVID relapse or something else would have happened. It, you know, wouldn't have been good. Actually, yeah. This is not the time to be playing with sugar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, you know, that I mean, that was definitely a big part of my thinking about it. Yeah. So well, um, glad you got through it. That's all. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. And um, my, uh, you know, and I, I, I also had this sweet taste in my mouth afterwards for days, and I didn't like it. <laughs> mm. I'm like, oh, wow, wow. So even my toothpaste now is just like, oh, I, I cannot bear it. You, you know what? I, I've never, excuse me, I've never had that like the sweet taste lasting for days but i do not mm -hmm. like the taste of toothpaste anymore yeah it's always disgustingly sweet yeah well so i did some googling because i was like what else can i brush my teeth with but all these dentists say you don't need a toothpaste like it's the brush the the brushing action that does the work so you yeah. know i was like great so i've stopped using it and it was like oh yes this is Join so much better I, why didn't you say anything? I wish I had because, known. So, I'm already weird enough. I feel like everybody <laughs> looks at me like, Arian is always doing some sideways mess. So, <laughs> like, you know, let's just put it all out there. I don't wear deodorant anymore, ever. Not even, like, Toms or something like that. Like, some, some, uh... <laughs> non-aluminum stuff like i just don't do it period i smell like i smell when i stink i wash and that's it um <laughs> and yeah there's no no toothpaste goes into this mouth anymore um one it tastes disgusting and two i've seen who was it I don't think it was Saladino. It was somebody talking to Saladino, but they said that um, fluoride is an antibacterial, um, an antibiotic agent. And it's not just, like all antibiotics, it does not just kill the bad bacteria, but it kills all bacteria. And there are bacteria uh -huh. that live in your mouth that are supposed to be there. So. I was already not using toothpaste by that time because I just thought, like, my thought process is somehow humans were living healthy way before we invented a lot of these things. So mm -hmm. does it actually make sense to keep doing some of, most of these things? And for some of them, I should keep doing. I'll, I'll still wear clothes even though cotton textiles didn't exist back then. <laughs> because that's a legit thought. Like, I'm... And I've literally thought about like, well, maybe I should buy wool everything, but I'm not ready to go down that road yet. That's a rabbit hole that I'm not trying to go down. It's probably expensive as hell, but uh, yeah, a little bit, thing, but not really. I actually prefer wearing wool stuff. 
I, my socks finally, um, you know, I have some t-shirts that are wool. It's a better breathable fabric, but it, you know, yeah, it is more expensive. Right. So, uh, and I remember you telling me about wool, um, wool underwear for the winter. And I meant to check that oh, out. Oh, silk, silk, been. silk long underwear. That's what I wear in winter. Oh, you told me about I mean, wool at the time. You've upgraded to silk now? No, I, I'm pretty sure I was talking about silk, but there silk, is... Silk just sounds so fancy. It <laughs> does, but it's very thin. It's silky, so your clothes don't, like, get bunched up on it. And it doesn't look like you've got, like, a second layer beneath. But it, silk is super, super uh, warm and insulating. Mm. Yeah, so okay. I usually get them from L.L. Bean or Land's End. They both sell silk long underwear, as you know, as well as like regular long underwear and wool mm. long underwear. So I guess if you're going to the Arctic, you know, maybe you want the wool. But, um, you know, for New York or Chicago winters, the silk long underwear under your clothes is good. Why we're discussing this, I don't know. It's like 80 what? degrees. We totally... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So maybe when we get to carnivore winter, um, yeah, we'll get we'll come back. The winter twenty one week. Yeah, but okay. But, so yeah. you so stop. Just... Wait, when did you stop brushing using br toothpaste? It was a while ago. It's been over a year. Oh um, wow! Yeah. So I I do this game um, that's really not fun. Where like I'll go to. So if I'm at somebody's house or somebody's at my house, um, they might notice that toothpaste isn't out. Yeah. Or if I'm around them, then I'll like I'll use the toothpaste now, but like I don't really like it. I'm making a big deal out of rinsing my mouth out because I don't want that taste in my mouth. Yeah. As soon as yeah. I'm done, I want it out. I want it all gone. Um and then I just started telling people like really recently like in the past month or so like i just don't want to i have toothpaste for you to use but yeah I, i'm not gonna use it and i just actually i don't even tell them. so i'm there if i'm at somebody's house and i'm i'm just gonna brush my teeth whenever i go to the bathroom in the morning mm -hmm. and i just don't use toothpaste we don't talk about it it doesn't come up i don't even think people notice yeah, I don't know why they would. I mean, if you floss and brush, <clears throat> like, you've done all that needs to happen. Like, and frankly, I don't really like that minty yeah. breath from other people. It's just like, ugh. <laughs> I don't I, like this at all. <laughs> yep. I don't like it on my mouth, or I don't like it, like, in my breath. I don't want it coming from other people. I really yeah. notice now when people, like, use mouthwash and then like talk to me if they're close because then like i can smell the strong mint flavor and oh yeah God, i know you probably think this is great it's not no it is not it is not at all so um, i thought about looking for a non-mint non-fluoride toothpaste and um i thought like this is really the only reason i'm even doing this is to please other people who don't care is to make sure that nobody's weirded out by the fact that I don't use toothpaste. So yeah. screw it. I'm just not going to use it. I already don't use it when I'm home. I can continue not using it everywhere. Yeah. I actually need to buy a new toothbrush because it still has the taste of toothpaste in it from, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to get a new one and then I'm like, you know, it'll be better. But I, I thought when did you that stop? last week, like, I, cause oh, okay. I don't know, yeah. somehow during COVID, like my whole, you know, my nose, I, I lost a sense of smell, my, my taste changed and it's not changed back in that way. Like I can smell again, but like, I feel like I'm much more sensitive to, to tastes and that I wasn't as sensitive to before. So now yeah. like, you know, toothpaste is just abhorrent to me. And, um, you know, and I guess while I was sick, you know, I was breathing through my mouth a lot. And so my mouth t tasted gross. And so I brushed my teeth more often. And then that taste was just around the whole time. Maybe I'm just associating yeah. that taste with feeling awful. 
you know, so now those things are inextricably linked. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, also, you you were sick. You had COVID, so you lost, and you had the symptom of losing your sense of taste and smell. Mm-hmm. So maybe it came back with a vengeance. Or yeah. just you weren't tasting toothpaste for that time, and then it comes back, and you're like, oh, oh, you, is this what this tastes like? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't know what it was. But now that saccharine sweet taste, I just, it's with me, you know, and I don't like yeah. it. And I bought yeah. some La, LaCroix. There's, like, some new flavors. So I was like, oh, let me try these. And that um, also leaves this weird saccharine sweet taste in my mouth, and I hate it. So yep. I'm like, now I've got all this LaCroix. I cannot bring myself to drink any more of it. So... <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, what has happened in the last 11 months? Like, I cannot have anything sweet. So in my mind, it's all built up. And, you know, I was going to say Johnny G said he would have had chocolate, dark chocolate, if, you know, he were going to go go for something. And I tell mm-hmm. you, Johnny, I stood in front of the Lily's Chocolate Bar for quite some time, really contemplating it. But again, I was like, it's gonna, it has some soy in it, it's got chocolate... Um, you know, this is going to irritate and inflame me more, I think, than lemon juice and um, Lakanto will. So mm-hmm. I really gave it some thought. And then I was like, well, maybe if I get the milk chocolate and skip the nuts, because, you know, it's going to be the, you know, the vegetable oils that are going to be inflammatory. But then I was like, well, let me not risk it at all. So I gave it a lot of thought and I did not do it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, Chase says he understands my MO of avoiding pure sugar. So good. I'm glad other people get that. Yeah. And Marianne, oh, thank you for the uh, the super sticker. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I, I don't think it. I've seen that one before. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. I really appreciate it. And for everyone, um, well, one, uh, give me a like. I see there's a lot of people in here. Hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you can get notification every time I go live. And if you like our content, hit that little uh, icon of the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat. And uh, you can give me a super chat or a super sticker. And, um, you know, it really helps to keep um, our content up because I like making it. But, um, you know, it does take uh, uh, money, effort, and time for sure. Yeah. Um, so large picture is done. No toothpaste in over a year. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Monica Wilson says, I don't use toothpaste either. I brush with Soleil water. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nice. Um, and Johnny G jokes, I miss the smell of New York City garbage. Indeed. <laughs> I did. I did. And since I couldn't smell myself, I had to just start, you know, showering on a schedule. Um, <laughs> so, but I do still use deodorant. I have not um, given that up. So, um, but for years in the past, I've used that crystal, which worked perfectly for a long time until it completely stopped working and so that was what, that what you the cr- you, you, the, you know the crystal like you can buy it in the deodorant aisle it's the crystal what is this you, it's a crystal it's like I, I think it's like salt and some other stuff and it's in a crystal form and <laughs> you wet it a little and you put it on underneath you're literally and, rubbing a crystal in your underarm uh-huh. yeah I, that's I'm awesome. not the only I'm not the only one who's used this come on guys I know you've used it it's salt <laughs> it's not it's not like a quartz crystal it's salt um, and but it's got some maybe some other stuff in it but um, it worked amazingly I mean amazingly no smell at all um, mm-hmm. but but then at some point it just stopped working. And I found that from other people too. Like it works for years and then one day it goes kaput and that's it. And it doesn't work at all. Huh. And you stink. Stink completely. It's like your, your body goes on strike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, nope, not never again. Now I haven't tried to use it again since. And that's, it's got, it's got to have been like 10 years since I last used it. But mm. um, yeah. 
So you wonder if um, maybe your body reset. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not... I mean, I've been happy with my dove. I'm not... I wasn't looking to, you know, redo something else. So this this salt crystal thing, um, <laughs> does it actually... Is it just a deodorant, or does it work as an antiperspirant, too? I think what it does is it kills the bacteria that are in your armpit whose excrement is what creates the smell. Okay. So, I don't know what that... It doesn't make you stop sweating, and it right. doesn't cover the smell. It actually kills the thing that makes the smell. Right. Okay. So that's like... Um, I've seen people try... Um, I don't think I've heard about lemon juice, but definitely like alcohol or peroxide. Um, as yeah, I don't think those. Deodorant. I don't think those work as well. Like the crystal will last twenty four hours. At twenty five hours, you're gonna stink to high heaven, but you can get twenty four hours. But I feel like alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. You know, you get like four, five, six hours. You don't get a full day. Yeah, they never. They never worked that long for me. Um, I also find though, and I've seen other carnivores say this, that just the smell is better when you're carnivore. Like you don't smell as much. So I've seen a bunch of people say like they just spontaneously stop using deodorant too. I, yes, I've definitely heard that. I, that seems to be true for other people. I, I feel like I have not noticed any difference and so i've had to maintain my regular hygiene um, <laughs> schedule i i have i have not you know decided to make any changes there <laughs> maybe one day um, <laughs> I, I don't know um so <laughs> I mean, like you say, like, I'm already so weird. Like, uh, let me just keep one normal thing, you know? Um, nah, I, I get you. Yeah, it's like it's like me no. with the clothes. Like, gotta wear clothes, too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, Mommy Does Keto says 90% um, cacao chocolate isn't terrible as far as carbs. Um, yeah, you know, and, and I figure as far as carbs go, like, I've got a lot of, you know, leeway there before getting kicked out of ketosis. So I wasn't too worried about the carbs. I was more just worried about, like, any inflammation that might happen from the stuff that was in it. But that's, you know, that's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. Monica says she's heard of the crystals but never used it. Mommy does keto, tried the crystal. It didn't work for her. Um, hmm. Yeah, Maybe. And this crystal thing. large, large picture says, so deodorant kills the bacteria that makes the smell. No, deodorant doesn't do that. Deodorant just <laughs> covers it with a smell, another smell. Um, but the crystal kills the bacteria whose excrement makes the smell. So, um, yeah, like there are some deodorants that are actually built to kill the bacteria causing the smell. Most of them don't. Yeah. And then, and, so stuff, actually... and antiperspirants stop you from sweating, which is different from, I mean, I suppose it kills the bacteria in the process, but, or, you know, it, it cuts their food source, but, um, yeah. you know, but it doesn't make you, it doesn't make you not sweat. So you will be wet. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so the crystal stuff, is it actually called crystal? Because I yeah. see a thing called crystal. All right. Yeah. All right, so it's not like I. That's what I was asking. Like, is it literally a crystal? Like, is it like a big? I I am not rubbing an amethyst in my armpit. If that's what you're asking, the energy well, you said... cycles. <laughs> the the so energy. It, I'm so... pushing the energy out of you know the energy of bad smell is just you mm. know doing a reiki kind of thing to cleanse. <laughs> You know what? I'm not going to laugh too hard because I bet you <laughs> there are woke people who are literally rubbing crystals on themselves um, yeah. to activate some chakra, some stuff that, like, I don't mean to make fun of that. That's a, a realm of knowledge that I just don't have experience with and haven't researched at all. But yeah. I thought you meant, like, 
a actual like big ass salt crystal that you wet and rub in I mean it, it that's what it looks like it looks like a big crystal in right, so I mean now now it comes in the shape of a deodorant um you know stick thing but it used <laughs> to be like a big hunk of crystal that's that's I mean in the old days in the mm -hmm. 90s when I first started using it but I see now it's like polished into like a rounded um you know crystal bar but it's it's a it looks like a piece of crystal yeah okay i see it does that's cool <laughs> see if i knew about that maybe i would still be using deodorant i mean you could try it see if you like it i could so johnny g says <laughs> Johnny G says when he cheats, he gets tennis elbow. That sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Wow. Um, yeah. And Marianne says I cannot get any weirder. I don't know. You could. You know. I still. I haven't. I haven't made my soap, but I'm pretty close. I've got like a ton of fat, like just piled up in the in the refrigerator. So I can. I still have room to get weirder. I still There's don't. always room for more weird in your life. Mm -hmm. You just gotta open your heart and let it in. Yeah. Um, okay, Johnny G's over all of the uh, <laughs> BO talk. So let's move on. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> the original, like the, the original thing that I wanted to talk about tonight was carnivore for the culture. And um, I wanted to talk about how many, um, how many more black and brown people I see, you know, gravitating towards carnivore and giving it a try. Um, I think that's really exciting. And, uh, you know, I talk about all the time about, um, it, you know, how important carnivore is in reversing like metabolic disease, which is, you know, the thing that's killing most Americans, right? So mm -hmm. it is it is great to um you know see this as it being an option that's picked up in the community that in a community that's been really hard hit by um you know by uh metabolic disease so uh i'm i'm really pleased i'm really really pleased so are that's you awesome. seeing more people like picking it up or um not more than I am used to seeing. Um, what I guess my only outlet is where I'm seeing like the community, and especially being able to tell like uh, who is uh, what of any uh, racial background is probably the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. um, so I have seen new people join the group, which. I don't know if I just stopped paying attention, but like I stopped seeing new people for a while. So definitely in the last like two, three weeks, I've seen a good number of new people come in, post mm -hmm. uh, about how they're brand new. Um, most of them brand new, but there's been a few, maybe like three or four or so that have said like, yeah, I've been doing this for a year and I'm really happy to see a group of black people doing it. And mm -hmm. I'm always surprised by that. Um, that's so, it's great to see new people. It's also great to see somebody who's been doing it for a while, who just like, they needed to discover a community and now they found it. Yeah, absolutely. That's the situation that I was in. Yeah. And that they've been doing it so long, um, you know, on their own and really been doing well. Like that's pretty impressive too. Yeah. Right. It's huge. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I and I feel like I'm getting less pushback from people, you know, mm. um, you know, I meet people online, you know, who do all sorts of things like, you know, I have other interests outside of, you know, surprisingly other interests outside of being carnivore. And uh, I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I use, um, you know, I use my carnivore account to follow follow a lot of stuff. And, um, 
you know, and so sometimes, like, I'm communicating with people about other stuff, and they're like, so what is it, you know, what do you coach on? Like, you eat a carnivore diet? Like, just me? And I'm like, wow, you know, people are starting to know what this is, even, and, like, kind of yeah. getting it. Yeah, so that's cool. So you're seeing yeah. people in your other interest group that... Mm -hmm are open to carnivore or they're already carnivore or willing to join all the above yeah or they'll say you know oh yeah i did a carnivore challenge last year or you know i did a 30-day carnivore challenge or i did beef you know beef salt and water and i'm like mm. wow wow so you know they aren't necessarily sticking with it long term but then they're like so how do i you know i'm thinking about doing it again and I did so well, and all of these great things happened when I did it. And I'm kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, why did you get off of it? Like, if you were feeling so awesome, like, why did you get off? Like, good question. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I, uh, I really, but you know, hopefully, we're I'll, I can steer them back. But I think, um, yeah, I think that there are a lot more people that have been exposed to the concept and, um, you know, and who are, like, doing it. So um, I hope to, you know, to, um, like, keep, you know, finding these people and bringing them into the group. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, one, that's awesome that that many new people are around and... I think that speaks to, I guess, why it's needed to do the, um, like I saw that you had the uh, maximum fat loss or weight loss um, kind of boot camp thing that you were doing or starting. Like, we need that stuff because apparently there's a ton of people who are trying on their own or with very little instruction or possibly incorrect instruction and then they end up not sticking with it which just tells me that for some reason this failed it wasn't yeah. working for you you didn't have the support you needed and yeah we need that support because you step outside and all the temptation is there yeah yeah well, for sure, you know, I mean, a, a main thing that I often hear is people trying to do carnivore with chicken and fish only. And that's just not going to work. Yeah. Chicken is a weak bird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not getting enough salt is a key, key thing that people, mm -hmm. I mean... You know, as much as we talk about it, at, we talked for the first half hour about it, and yet, yeah. and still, you know, it is a problem. It's very, that's an easy place for people to get tripped up. Yeah. And it's the, it's that and the kind of meat they're eating seem to be very basic things that new people screw up. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. nothing... I have my own personal feelings about chicken and fish. I just had um, monkfish for the first time, and it was pretty good, but also, like, it wasn't filling. It was annoying to cook. It's gross-looking when you take it out the package. <laughs> What's the purpose? I could just buy beef instead. Um, yeah. That's funny. But, I've had such a craving for fish. I finally um, ordered some scallops and and cod. Mm. Yeah. I don't think. I mean, I've I'm not eating it. Life. I'm not eating it alone. I'm. It's still surf and turf all the way. But yeah, mm -hmm. I've really like wanted fish. I don't know why. Yeah, I haven't had that feeling in a while. Not since maybe like last summer. And it wasn't for fish, it was for probably scallops. Mm -hmm. Either scallops or like the crab legs that come in a seafood boil. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think you're, people don't realize like just how unfulfilled they're going to be if they're trying to fill up on such light meat. Yeah. Well, I think they've never been fulfilled, so yeah. you think that this is all there is, but then, you know, you go the other way, and it's like, wow, 
Wow. Yep. Yeah. Because it's like you're used to just only working towards being like physically full. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Johnny G says salmon is nice. Uh, you know, I think uh, I don't really care for salmon. I like the lighter, flakier um, whitefish. So, um, I love Chilean sea bass, but it is so ridiculously expensive at this point that it's, I'm just like, I can't do it. And, um, yeah, I like salmon. Salmon is pretty much the only fish that I'm happy to eat. I'll eat other fish if it's there, but, like, you tell me you got salmon and it's cooked well, and I'm, I'm actually excited for it. I'm going to have cod for dinner when we get off. I'm looking forward to that. Mm. I like cod. It's good stuff. <laughs> well, None of the white fishes taste like anything to me. Uh, I think that's why I like salmon. It has such a more, such a stronger flavor. Uh, yeah. And it's got the fat. Sometimes. Yeah. Nice yeah, I have story. had. Yeah. yeah. Um, the salmon uh, I bought, I think I came on here talking once about like, apparently there's fake salmon out there that stores are selling and they don't tell you that it's fake. Um, that salmon was like super dry, no fat on it. It was so unfulfilling. I ate it, but I was not happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Johnny G, you don't have to take it back. If you like salmon, you like salmon. It's okay. Hey. And Chase says, uh, chicken and salmon is delicious, but OG is ribeye. Yeah, just the beef. I, I mean, I don't think you have to choose. I think it's nice to have, you know, surf and turf or, um, what is it? Turf and wings. I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I think. <laughs> How are you um, going to do it? Whatever yeah. combination. Yeah, I think it's fine to mix those things together. So I don't, you know, I don't want people, and I don't know, I feel like people, um, I'm actually going to put out a video, I think, over the weekend, but, like, I, I think people just take this restriction too far, um, you know, and restrict for the, I don't know, the sake of restricting to beef, salt, and water. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I happily do it for long stretches. But that's because that's what I enjoy. And um, not because I think that there's something better about it, you know. I mean, for me, it's all about the inflammation and bringing that inflammation down. But, um, right. but you know, if, if presented with pork belly, I think, uh, well, in fact, I ordered some. So I will be having some <laughs> next week. And I'm just going to have to deal with the consequences of that choice. But I will. Because it's good. It's worth it. So yeah. we are learning what uh, our, our host vices are. So mine is clearly coffee. Every time coffee treats me bad, I come running right back. And it ain't, one of yours might be pork. Mm -hmm. It's good meat. Tastes good. It, it is. It's good. It stuff. doesn't seem to like you so much, though. It does not. But I, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, because I brought inflammation way down, I got a little room. Got a little room to play around. Yeah, I test the waters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Johnny G says we had smoked, uh, smoked cod on Good Fridays as a kid, and it stunk the whole. Oats and attracted mm. stray cats. <laughs> I I imagine it would. I imagine it would. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, if I didn't have a problem with histamines, I would totally get bacalao, which is that salted codfish, um, mm. and I would make that all the time. So. But, I found a store that sells salted fish, and I was mm -hmm. scared to get it because it looked all like brown and slimy. 
Wait, it shouldn't be slimy. It should be dry and covered with salt. Well, it was... It may not have been just salted. They did something else to it. Because, yeah, it was wet. It wasn't dry. It was in, it's, like, a plastic package. It shouldn't be... I mean, um, salted codfish or bacalao should be dry and hard and salty and like got crust salt on it on all of it. Oh. It well I don't know that wet. it was I don't know that it was cod. It could have been something else. Well any kind of fish. It would be dried out. I mean that's the whole point of using the salt is it absorbs all the water out so it desiccates it. So it shouldn't be wet and slimy. No, oh, so this was preserved some other way then. Mm-hmm. It probably had salt in it, but there was probably something else going on. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I was scared to try it because, like, I've been thinking like preserved meat is the way to go. Preserved meat is definitely saving my butt over and over when I don't feel like cooking or when I'm going somewhere. But I don't know about the preserved fish yet. I haven't figured it out on my own yet, and getting it at the store, at least this stuff did not look. I mean, I would be, you know, fish is one of those things you got to be super careful about because it's, you know, it goes bad so quickly. So you don't want to make a mistake there because <laughs> that would right. be really bad. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like fish going bad, maybe I guess because it does go bad quickly, like the consequences are dire. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's better to eat, I mean, nowadays, since you have the option, you know, the frozen fish, usually they freeze it on the boat, so that's, like, the freshest you're going to get. No. Oh. Yeah. I do want to learn how to preserve fish, though. Hmm. Learn how to salt I just, it. I think, yeah, and maybe that's just it. Like, go ahead and salt it, pack on the salt, and then I got to figure out like, am I okay with the excess salt being wasted, or do I want to find some way to use that? Because I'm getting Redmond's real salt. That stuff isn't like cheap. Don't so, use, don't use that. Use yeah. a different salt. It's just a sea salt that's a little cheaper. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand what's the purpose of preserving fish. I mean, the only purpose in preserving it would be if you were able to get it when it was caught and preserving it at that point. But by the time you get it, you know, it's already been dead, you know, 24, 48, 72 hours. You're only extending its lifespan, but from later on down the road. Whoa, but that's the case for anything that I preserve. Like if That's I true. Drinks, right, but beef has a much more flexible window um, mm. that you can still eat it. Fish, it doesn't, there's not that flexibility. And, you know, mostly I think it's because fish, um, you know, lives in cold water. And so the kind of bacteria that's in it is used to colder temperatures. And so, you know, land animals are used to warmer, you know, temperatures. So if you put it mm -hmm. in a cooled refrigerator, that's like enough. But with fish, like you've got to keep it on ice because it's already used to the cooler temperature. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't get killed um, as easily. So if you went fishing with your buddies and then mm -hmm. you tried to preserve that, that makes sense. But for you to get it fresh right. and then try to preserve that doesn't make sense. You're better off just eating it <laughs> as soon as you get it. Well, that's one case for fish out the window then. When well, you can... Fish. No, you can go fishing. There's yeah, gotta be... If, that's a thing that I do on a regular basis. I mean, it's a thing you could do. I don't know thing one about fishing. Um, I have uncles in Ohio who go fishing in Ohio. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I want to go at some point, but I mean, fact, yeah. I think it's it's uh it's a nice enjoyable activity. If I had to live off of it, you know, that would be a mess cuz I I never catch fish. I just sit out there. I see fish swim by. They eat my bait and I don't seem to be able to get them you know, out of the water. But um but other people seem to do so you know, be able so to you go them. out and you feed the fish essentially. In a, in a longer, com more complicated way. <laughs> yeah. With more work, money, and effort put into it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice. Too. No, no, it's nice to, you know, just be... It's quiet, you're out on the water, it's sunny. So, that's no nice. No beer. I mean, Everyone I know does it with like case of beer. I guess we could do that. You're not really supposed to be boating and drinking alcohol, though. Even that if it's a right. robot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it that's is, the thing. It's against the law. And it makes sense. <laughs> it makes yeah. perfect sense, actually. Like, <laughs> your body's not built for the water, and you're about to get drunk and then go sit on the water. That doesn't. That's not a good idea. It's not logic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, just try to relax. Enjoy it. Um, Fresh fish. Cook it then. Eat it then. Yeah. Johnny G says, uh, preserving a big catch is a good idea, but one is not. Um, add, that makes sense. And now he's suggesting you turn your house into a smoke hut. Um, I, well, I have said repeatedly, I just want a backyard so I can have a smoker and a grill in the backyard. And yes, I would smoke fish in it. Logic. Yeah. If I had a smoker, that's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. And Leon says preserving fish is very ta preserve fish is very tasty. There are many things that can be done with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's we veered off into an interesting conversation about fish and uh, preserve fish. But um, I'm just uh, again going back to carnivore for the culture. Just so excited about how many black and brown people I see doing this and. Um, I just want to encourage more people to get people to give it a try. Um, and when I talk about, you know, reaching like a, uh, you know, an, an all time low of inflammation, like, I think that's something that perks people's ears up because, you know, everybody is starting to suffer with, su suffer some inflammation, whether it's, you know, swollen ankles, depression, anxiety, um, you know, arthritis, all of that kind of stuff. And so offering, you know, some kind of relief from that, um, I think is appealing to everybody. Yeah. And I think a lot of people also don't realize how many diseases are, um, like at their root, their inflammation. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just inflammation in a different spot, and we call it a different thing, but it's another yeah. one of these, like, progressive, no one knows how to fix it, there is no cure diseases. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, and I still get frustrated, because I feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there, and, um, you know, and it's very confusing. And, like, last week I had a clubhouse going, and this guy came on, and he was, you know, I mean, he openly declared that he was a vegan and um but he had a question about like why basically why i wasn't um following the you know consensus that's out there among scientists about what is healthy to eat and you know and i think i, I mean uh, you know basically i said i'm not interested in you know arguing with vegans and this is what i believe and here is um you know and and the 
uh, evidence that I use is first and foremost my experience in my body and um, mm -hmm. you know it's all well and good for studies to say this that and the other and doctors to say this that and the other but none of them have to die for me none of them have to live my body and yep. um, and if I feel better doing something then that's more important than what the consensus says because consensus is an average of whatever that's not you know my life mm -hmm. so um you know and i told them i wasn't interested in arguing and this was a room for people who eat meat and if you have a problem with it you should go elsewhere but um <laughs> you know so he got quiet and he listened a little bit but you know he continued to you know kind of bring up like studies and um and consensus science and i was like why do you i don't even understand why you think consensus science is good like, that doesn't even sound like a thing that's appealing. Um, you know, I mean, my understanding of science is asking questions and studying it and looking to see mm -hmm. if that study can be replicated. Mm -hmm. You know, so, like, consensus isn't supposed to be a part of that. You know, consensus is, you know, theoretically democracy. It is, you know, it's not science as as and, I understand science to be. Well, consensus it's not even the goal in of that, science. Right, like there's supposed to be questioning and critical thinking and it, like you're not doing that if you just like they'll do they'll do studies that use the same data as the study they ran last year and they'll say well, scientists have now proven that saturated fat does blah. They've proven that a vegan diet does blah. Um, and you haven't critically thought about any of what's happening. The, the scientists haven't either. And you just run with it. And you go, well, I don't understand why you guys aren't following the science. Mm -hmm. Like, if, yeah, if that's what you think, then you've got the whole thought process wrong, you've got the scientific method wrong, um, and you don't actually understand the studies that you're talking about that you swear, like, tell you that this other way of eating is the way to go. Yeah. Like, at least some critical thinking would tell you that actually, we can't prove much of anything about nutrition we're having a really hard time doing it we've had a hard time for a long time yeah yeah it, yeah the argumentative vegans are odd yeah i mean you know i appreciate at least you know some of their um standpoint and approach and and i too wanted to be healthy and make the healthiest choice so, you know, when I, when I was trying to be vegan myself, like, I was like, oh, this is the healthiest thing and this is what the studies say. So I wanted to do the healthiest thing. I just didn't have the correct information. And so <clears throat> I was making a choice that wasn't, that wasn't healthy. But, you know, I, I realized that like, you know, and perhaps this is, this is crazy, you know, sort of puritanical, you know, um, thing that runs through Americans, but like, you know, our bodies speak to us in terms of, you know, what feels good, tastes good, what doesn't feel does or doesn't feel good or doesn't taste good. Like those are the <laughs> signals our bodies send us. Like, this is a good thing for me to eat. This is not a good thing for me to eat. And yep. we're so disconnected from accepting those signals that you know we are now left having to reason out what is a good diet rather than just eating and letting our bodies tell us and that you know and that is such a crazy thing and i think that you know veganism is sort of the height of that because you have to take um you know you have to supplement in some ways in order to make a mm -hmm. vegan diet work which is already a sign from your body like don't do this this is not working if you have to supplement this is not working so 
I'm kind of like, Speak it. so we have, you know, we have elevated this idea of not listening to the one, you know, person that really knows what your body needs, which is, you know, your body. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then this is supposed to be some spiritual path. And I'm just like, I don't understand how being spiritual means ignoring the signs of your body. I mean, unless it's sort of like this whole, you know, kind of, I mean, maybe it's kind of tied to a little bit of that Gnosticism where, you know, the physical is bad and evil and the, Mm. you know, the spirit is good and um, pure. But it's like, you know, until you die, we're, you know, we're walking around in bodies. So, you know, it's makes sense to, (laughs) to do things that make the body last longer, not shorter. Um, and just, even if you have a disagreement or you don't know what makes the body last longer or shorter, I, I just, I go back to, um, If it's what we've been doing and it's the natural thing to do, it is more likely to be correct than yeah. something that has required science to even exist. Now. Yeah. Um, so I find myself like not wanting to get into an argument about the science of any diet with people because it's just a rabbit hole and you end up saying, well, my evidence says this or this is what the studies show, or this is what the body does. And you're talking, like, when I, when I do that, I'll be talking, like, fundamental, um, fundamental science. Not like, mm-hmm. oh, a study show that something is 60% more something. Like, I don't, I don't want to have those arguments. Right, right. If we just talk about what the body does with food, I feel like that's a much more productive argument. But a lot of times, I can't even have that argument with people. And... Mm-hmm. It's like the other logic that I could see a vegan using that I don't agree with, but it makes sense. It's just that they have a belief that pleasure is bad. Yeah. So the food that feels good is bad, um, which is a very puritanical Quaker, um, uh like attitude like okay if you think that then i don't really we have to have a very different conversation Mm -hmm. this isn't actually about nutrition at all yeah um other than that it it doesn't really yeah that narcissism like oh we'll deny the physical okay that makes sense too if that's what you believe then i can see how you would say plants are the better way to sustain yourself but if you just think like no this is what's best for the human body how can you think that when we've existed before these plants we evolved on something other than these plants these plants didn't exist they were not grown this way they were we bred them to be what they are now yeah but people don't know that right they don't um you know I don't know. So, Bayet, thank you so much for the super sticker. That is so awesome. I really appreciate it. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I hadn't been interested in kind of pushing back against um, vegans or vegetarians, but, you know, I do see a lot of information out there Um that's, you know, confusing to people. And, um, you know, I've definitely had some people be like, you know, uh, yeah, it's so great to hear that there is another option to be healthy besides, you know, being vegan. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there are definitely people who are like, truth be told, like, I can't, I can't go without meat. (laughs) So, but I'm like, it doesn't need to be whispered whispered in secret and silence like I want us to come out of the closet there are many of us most people do not want to live without eating any meat 
So, yep. <laughs> you know, let's let's not make this shameful. We got to push back and, you know, make it like the norm. Yeah, like you should not be ashamed to eat meat. Um, so I'm always really, uh, I guess, heartened or refreshed to find people who um, I interpret them from what other things I know about their personality and I go uh, oh you're probably like you know really not into it but like I I only meet like 90 90% of the time and they're like oh awesome I love steak I don't know where you got the idea that I was one of these plant based people I'm not <laughs> and I'm like because you use the crystal oh, deodorant <laughs> <right>? <laughs> I'm sorry, you seem like a person who would be plant based, but you know what? I gotta stop serious. I saw a, I saw a jar of shea butter and the crystal deodorant. I you know <laughs> <laughs> Like a lot of times these things go together and I think people probably yeah. look at me like the same way like you said people will look at you like, Oh, but don't you care about the environment? Mm-hmm. You you eat meat? And I'm like mm-hmm. So I'm expecting other people to have that attitude and actually it doesn't come up sometimes like there are times where i talk to people and they're like oh yeah dude love a steak Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah there's actually i think a lot of people i think the vegan movement and the like the you know just plant-based life period like it does exist and it's a thing but yes there are a ton of people who see that stuff and they may think in the back of their head the same way people may think about church like oh i should go to church they haven't Mm -hmm. fully made the decision to opt out of that and that's how they are about vegetables they're like Mm -hmm. i probably should eat less meat but meat tastes really good Mm -hmm. have you had fried chicken i'm not giving that up but I think that's the worst is when you make um, a diet that's unsustainable an aspiration and then don't ever do it. So now mm. you're sending the message to people that this is the right thing to do, yet no one's actually doing it. No one is able to do it. And yeah. that that's a worse message because then, you know, you're just, you, you don't have anyone speaking any kind of rational truth. Except right. for us. Yeah. And and that's why with um with carnivore for me, like I don't and when I talk to other people about it, I don't automatically push them towards cut out all plants, be a carnivore. Mm-hmm. If they want to do that, then great. But the overall, like my overall message is just me. Add it mm-hmm. to your life, increase its presence in your life, you will be happy. Um, Mm -hmm. how far you go down that road is something that you know you'll figure out as time goes on I definitely think that a lot of people most people all people could benefit from cutting out all plants altogether Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah I think when you make veganism um, this like aspirational end all be all top of the mountain this is where you need to go um it just, it shames everybody, and that's why a lot of people, like, it's unrealistic. People don't stick to it. So many yeah. vegans end up quitting, and so many vegans aren't actually vegan. They say they are, and they're eating. They're eating eggs. Yeah. 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 Or, you know, weekly, they'll, like, have a cheat, and then it's like, well, when are you, you know, when is that vegan, and when is that just, like, you know, you're super strict with your diet all week and then for two days you're like eating wings and ribs and right else. <laughs> like you're probably eating just enough meat to sustain yourself yeah or for sure you are yeah so um <laughs> anyway i you know i i I think it's, you know, it's probably a good idea to kind of push back against that and have some discussions about, um, you know, veganism. So, um, I haven't, uh, gone toe to toe with any vegans yet, but, uh, 
I don't know. Maybe I will start having some vegan trolls. Uh, they'll come. Um, they're in the. They're all over the carnivore reddits. Um, so if you're not getting more of them in Clubhouse yet, I'm sure they're coming. And then I uh, just found out recently that Clubhouse has finally come over to Android. So mm-hmm. now you got a oh, whole. Oh yeah, I saw. I got a notification that you're on. So yeah. Yeah. So I downloaded it and opened it once, but I haven't like actually played with it at all yet. Well, okay. Yet. So for you and for everybody, on Tuesday nights at eight PM, I do a you know a carnivore club, um, you know a, a carnivore room. So uh, you know, Arian, can you be there on Tuesday? And everybody, can you come on Tuesday and listen up, listen in? Um, nice. Yeah, I can definitely probably yeah. make that happen. Okay. All right. It'll be fun. And then, um, you know, and so for all of you who are watching and, uh, you know, certainly share this information with anyone else, think about doing the Maximum Weight Loss Program. It's starting next week. We're really focusing on the weight loss portion, so it's going to be a little bit different from how you might traditionally do a uh, carnivore. But um, you know, you can schedule a consultation with me, and we can just chat. Um, you know, this uh, tomorrow or this weekend to to see if it's something that you know is appealing to you or works for you. So definitely do that. And yeah. oh, l- so last week I did the ask me anything and I actually really enjoyed that. And I think it was helpful for you guys. So next week I want to do it again. Um, you know, maybe I'll try to do it every other week and see how that goes for a while. I was trying to figure out how to do a call in so people could actually call in and talk. Um, but that seemed kind of complicated and like, um, it's definitely going to be easier if I can do the camera. Um, I don't have all of the equipment to do it like a, a regular podcast where you have radio uh, or, you know, you have people calling in. Yeah, I've seen someone do it before, but I don't know what to use, what the technology was at all. Yeah, I think there's a one type of technology but it's like five or six hundred dollars so i'm not gonna do that Ooh. yeah um and i think i could just do this like i actually kind of wanted to practice and see if i just took you off um so that if mm-hmm. you're in the green room i just i wonder if people would be able to hear you mm. so, um. so if it were just me you know being seen Okay, well, it makes for a crappy video, but do you want to test that right now? No, no, um, but uh, that's that's what I was thinking. Um, okay, Portia just wrote, weird, that's me. Wonderful, energetic, intelligent, radiantly different. I'm not sure what that's referring to. Um... <laughs> Wonderful, energetic, intelligent, radiantly different. Oh, that's a nice acronym for weird, though. I like that. Ah. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I fall in the weird category, too. Yeah. Radiantly different. Yeah. So, yeah, me too. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, next week, uh, you know, let's... Um, uh, you know, come back, ask questions. I'm going to try to promote it a little bit earlier. So encourage people to come and ask their questions. And, um, cause you know, people ask me questions all week in, in my DMS and on Instagram. So, um, you know, hopefully that will be, a, you know, one way to get, you know, more, um, more different types of questions and issues on. So, so look forward to that next week. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. All right. All right, everybody. I had a great time tonight. We talked about a lot of random things. I hope you enjoyed it. (laughs) I know we got stuck on um, body hygiene for perhaps too long, Johnny G. Sorry about that. Um, But, uh, you know, I I think we had a fun time anyway. (laughs) I enjoyed it. Um. 
Uh, Johnny G says I can post an invite in the YouTube chat for guests to join. Yeah, you know, I, I totally am going to do that. I'm going to, um, you know, advertise it a bit more. So, yeah, hopefully that will um, that will get people um, talking. I think you mean Johnny G in the community section, right? So, uh, you know, I can put up a post during the week with uh, a notification saying that. So. I think he means when you're on the live sending so the link that i use to get into um mm -hmm. this uh this stream that we're doing i think he needs mm -hmm. to post that like if you put it in the chat so then yeah. people who have questions will click it join in can you have multiple people in your the waiting room yeah yeah um i did what? post it last week but um you know, I don't know. It seemed a little bit complicated, especially me being on my own doing it. But I could try mm. that again next week. If anybody here, if you're willing to, um, I mean, you know, certainly if you're willing to come on. Um, but, you know, of course, I've got to screen people. So um, that's another thing. But if you um, want to, uh, you know, come on and ask your question and just do it with audio, I think that I can do that. Um, so okay yeah johnny g that's right so i i did post it last week it was in the description but i didn't really talk about it and it was a little bit hard um uh monica says i signed in up for the app and they said i had to wait for an invite because that uh, yeah so yeah monica you have to get an invite but um i offer invites to people all the time so send me a dm right now on instagram and i'll send you an invite so you can get on yeah okay so i will see you all next thursday i'm really excited about it i will listen to you or we'll be talking on tuesday on clubhouse and um i'm gonna be putting up uh you know i'm gonna try to put up more video over the next um couple of weeks because uh i got behind and um i miss it so i'm gonna be putting more out there so i hope you enjoy it i've got something that is going to re release tomorrow um i think at noon and um yeah i'm gonna try to do something every day yeah we'll see hopefully nice. <laughs> yeah yeah um, all right, so I will talk to all of you later and have a great weekend and I'll see you soon. Good night. <laughs>